Hi, it's Andrew here from Home Theatre Engineering. Uh, I would like, if I may, to take you on a strange journey. Okay, well, it's not such a strange journey, but it is a journey through the user interface and the control systems for an Altitude Trinov 16. For those of you who haven't played with one of these, this is going to give you a bit of insight into how we control this thing and what this thing is capable of. Now, um, we're not going to really go into every single control because we will be here for a very long time, but I will flick through the pages so that you can see what's there and what potentially can be done with this unit. Um, and I think you'll start to get the idea that this thing is massively capable. Alright, so let's start at the front page. This is the play page. I'm just going to throw the glasses on because I'm as blind as a bat. Well, that's not true, but at least I can still see colours, which is a good thing. Okay, so uh, on the front page, of course, we have the, your volume controls. Um, we also have a standard mute button and a dim button. Now, the dim button allows you to drop the level by a preset amount perhaps 20 dB, uh, we've actually got that set to zero, it doesn't change anything and the reason being is if you forget it's there and you tra crank the volume up or someone doesn't realise then someone turns the dim on, or off I should say, then the, the level will rock it and you end up with bits of amplifier and speakers all over your room, potentially. Okay, just below that is your source, this shows that we are using a source labelled UHD disc, this is our HDMI 7 input, um, we've got Dolby True HD and the outmix is Neural X. Going further down, we click on output, we have our video input information, our video output information. If I click on there, there's all of that, plus um, there's some setup information. We can see our inputs are HDMI 1.4 from 1 to 3. This is changeable in the software to 2.0. Um, then I've got my input edited here, and we have our output edited as well. So there is a ton of information just there on that page, and we haven't stopped yet. Okay, moving on down, we've got Trinov Optimizer. From here, I can globally turn the whole thing off. Uh, in, in terms of optimization, I can turn off just the acoustic correction, just the level alignment, just the delay alignment, and also the 3D mapping, which we're currently using in this room on the surrounds. By the way, I'm sitting in our demo room at the moment. We have actually 21 in discrete speakers, including subwoofers in here, running off a 16-channel amp. We've doubled up two channels um, for the side surrounds, and we have four subwoofers running off one output. So, um, we've got a... Uh, I, I'm not going to go through the room now because we don't have time, but we do have a video of our demo room, uh, which is coming up, so you'll be able to click on that, and that will show you all the details of the room that we've got here. I've got to tell you, it's probably the best-sounding room I've ever sat in, um, I am blown away. We're very, very happy with this room now, and um, you know it's it's an exciting place to be in every respect. Um, okay, at the bottom there's an info page. It just gives us uh, other information about the unit, startup, um, system uh, default presets, um, maximum volume, the dim level, which I, as I said is zero. I can turn the front panel lighting on and off, um, and then we've got update information and uh, about this unit. Okay, or about Trinov, really. Okay, um, now if I'm just going to go back to the beginning of this page, what we also have here is an ability to manage all of our sources um, and associated triggers and what they're going to do with each source. Also, um, from here, uh, we can manage uh, the decoders. So we can choose uh, the settings for Dolby, for DTS, um, for Aura 3D and uh, some general settings as well. Okay, um, and I'll just go back again. And finally, from here, you can select the uh, decoder that you're going to use Auto, Dolby, Neural X, and so on and so forth. Aura 3D, of course. Um, we have the DTSX Pro update on our system, so we ten generally tend to leave it on Neural X. Um, but sometimes we flip between Dolby Surround. But uh, when we look at the display, we've got all 16 channels pumping, including our front uh, left and right wides, uh, and all of the six Atmos, and <laughs> this is great. Love it. Okay, so that's, that's the first page. The second page I'm going to show you is the speaker configuration page, and this is kind of cool. When you get a Trinom, you can buy with it, a special calibration microphone. It's got multiple heads on it and so each one can measure, it knows its distance in space and it can measure the time delay and the angle that each speaker is at and it actually plots these speakers. 
which is kind of cool. So um, you can actually put your dimensions in. Um, we haven't done that. Um, we don't really need to. It's just representative. Um, but you can see here our room. So we've got the left, center, right, front wides, side surrounds, rear surrounds, and then of course at the top we've got the Atmos speakers as well. All right, and these these have mapped out very well indeed, by the way. Um, so uh, below this, I'll just change this to what they call the small view. They are all our speaker allocations, starting with our left, uh, right, and center speakers. I can nominate where they go with Atmos, Dolby, Aura 3D, DTS, um, X, and DTS, and of course which output it's mapped to, plus I can adjust parametric EQ, and I can generate some pink noise, but I haven't got the volume turned up. So, okay. Um, now, um, also from here you can select a whole range of sort of default layouts, but from there you can then choose your speaker assignment and you can add and remove speakers to configure your room as you want. We've opted for a uh, straight six channel um, Atmos, but uh, in other versions of the room we've done the hybrid um, uh, Aura 3D Atmos configuration and therefore it can sort of modify itself to, to use those channels in, in those formats. So there's the 16 channels for our room. So that's how you basically say, okay, this is um, the uh, which speaker it is and where it's going and, and where it's being output to. And then that, that, of course, runs off for the XLR outputs on the back to your amplifier. Okay. Um, and for those of you who aren't sure what that looks like, here's a, an image of the back of um, the Trinov Altitude 16. So you can see all the outputs there. Okay. Moving right along, um, this is the one that probably is one of the more in-depth pages at the top. We'll go back to the other side now. So remember that was our play page. We're going to go to our um, uh, settings page. Now, pretty much, well, certainly a, a, a very large amount of everything that we do with the Trinov is in here somewhere. So I'm going to select the home tab and select. And here is our here are our sources on the top and our presets on the bottom. So we have UHD disk, which is HDMI 7 selected at the moment, and demo room one seat, maximum subs, is my preset. So that's for this seat here. Uh, we'll talk about the presets a bit further on. Um, then here we have the meters for the unit. Now, uh, these are the uh, input meters, and these are the output meters. Now, they're not showing much because I've got the volume muted, so no output, right? Um, but this is always good because we can see if a signal is clipping or if something's going wrong or if there's something specifically out of balance or make sure our LFE channel's working and so on and so forth. Um, always great to sort of refer to these um, so that we can see what's going on. You can see that, you know, obviously the left and right speakers are and, and the centre at the moment are doing a, most of the heavy lifting. Um, but the Atmos and the surrounds are all working as well. Okay, then we've got a source config tab. And here, for each of the inputs, so if I go to UHD disk, that's HDMI 7, that gives me the input and output configuration for, for that port. Okay, on to the next tab, Optimizer Settings. This is the Runtime tab. Here, much like we had on the first page, I can turn all of the optimization off, or I can turn it all on, or I can turn on or off the um, acoustic correction level alignment or delay alignment and I can have a listen and make sure that it's actually an improvement and that everything's working as it should. Um, I would note that you know one of the things you really need to do is you need to make sure you've got your bass set up properly and there are some very neat tricks that the um, that the Trinov can do in terms of, of um, bass management by the way. Okay Here's our settings page. This is the main settings page. Um, you can see just at the bottom of the tab here that I've got 3D mapping turned on. So what that does is if um, speakers aren't quite correctly aligned um, or if you've got an awkward room perhaps, we can remap the speakers so that the system can basically place the sound in the room where it should be. Um, this is kind of handy for rooms that are awkward, you know, rooms that are difficult to work with. Um, and also it just can pull things into line if you haven't quite got it right. It's not really an excuse, but it is a way of making sure that, you know, your sound is actually sort of getting distributed properly. So I've got 3D mapping on, and I've actually opted to turn that off for the LCRs, 
um, but I've got them on for all of the surrounds. Okay, so across the top here we've got advanced settings. Right, this is a tab that you probably don't want to play with too much unless you really know what you're doing. Uh, you've got the front uh, and surround speaker settings. You can see I've got remapping off on the front speakers but on for all the surrounds. You've got acoustic correction, you've got FIR and IR filters, um, your calibration settings and options, you've got optimizing according to left and right speakers, F and IR settings, you know, more of those, uh, level alignment settings, subwoofer low pass filter setting, decimation settings, and advanced FIR settings. So all of those are available here, and uh, you know you can really um, go to town in here. But you can mess things up, all right? You know if you if you increase some of the settings too much you can end up with it sounding very kind of robotic um, so you've over processed the sound don't want that you just want it to be natural right so you want to use this as a smart tool to get you know, accurate and faithful reproduction in a way that it should be you're not trying to synthesize it into something it shouldn't be okay the next tab is target curve now we're running Priscilla P28s at the front and P6s on the side um, very good sound in here um, highly recommend those speakers by the way in terms of getting SPL to the seat dynamic range clarity distortion free audio you know certainly ranking up there amongst our favorite speakers in terms of punch value for money detail and clarity um, they've got very strong um, compression drivers um, for the tweeters so we've got a bit of a roll-off happening and here it can sound you know if you've got all of that full sound being delivered at full energy uh, probably a little bit harsh it's probably actually more correct but our ears are not quite used to it so we tend to roll that off a bit um, and we can do that for each and every speaker as we go through including the subwoofer and for the subwoofer we can create house curves and all sorts of things there's 16 of those I'm not going to go through them all but I could actually customize this to each and every speaker I can also do exactly the same with group delay I can do the same with phase and I can do the same with impulse response as well okay um, finally we've got an excursion curve and that can also be modified and we can move those points around and and produce the sort of uh, result that we're really chasing okay um, all right the next page talks about speaker positions this is how again it's been mapped out by the unit and we can have a look to make sure everything's in place one of the giveaways is if you haven't actually pointed your microphone at the center speaker um, then that center speaker is going to be off axis at the moment it's bang on at zero degrees a left and right is bang on at 30 degrees we put a lot of effort into measuring and placing all of these speakers in the room um, and so everything is pretty much in the right place if you look at our atmos left top front right top front left top middle right top middle left top rear right top rear they're in line um, and uh, so on and so forth our left and right wides our left and right surrounds and so on and so forth so yeah um, we get an elevation view that shows you know I guess a sectional view of your speakers and then you get a numerical summary of all of that information as well so you can actually have a look at this and this covers so much information obviously which speaker it is its distance its elevation its azimuth its level in A and C font curves level A compensated level C compensated delay in milliseconds so I can actually see exactly what's going on in the room numerically um, and so on and so forth um, bandwidth of the speakers all of that kind of information okay let's keep going calibration now at the moment on this preset I've got a single calibration this is a reference calibration in this seat um, and that's it now that's probably not what I would normally do I'd probably have a few more calibrations but in other presets I've got multiple calibrations and I can jump from preset to preset for different seats one seat three seats six seats nine seats and I can apply weighting as to where I want you know the real attention of the processor to go so um, you know when I come in this room I put on preset one this is my seat I sit here I get all the glory all of the great sound you know nice distance from the screen everything's really cranking for here but if I want to be fair to the people around me then I can go to a different preset for everyone in the front row left and right I can still weight that I can go 20% for the person on my left 20% for the person on right and 60% for me I might not tell them that but that's what I can do okay so 
From here, I can actually fire up a preset, uh, sorry, a calibration on top of the preset I'm already in, um, and I can opt to do it from here by hitting um, add, and then I can add multiple calibrations into this existing preset. There is another way to do a calibration, and we'll get to that shortly. Okay, um, moving along, the next tab, optimizer graphs. All right, this is really powerful. Uh, in here, we have pretty much all of the um, information that's coming from each and every speaker. So um, what's really nice here is we've got a before, we've got an after. <laughs> you know, that response is like insanely good. Um, and we've got the, um, uh, the filter that's been applied um, based on the, either the speaker or the room, uh, what the microphone is hearing. And, you know, as I said, the middle one is, is the after result. So before is at the top. The filter applied is at the bottom and the outcome is in the middle. Really cool. And we can add all of the speakers on and have a look at how they're behaving together. And if you have a look, if you want to know how great these speakers are in this room, we've done some acoustic design in this room as well. Look at how similar the results are now. That's left, center, right, left surround, right surround, left rear surround, right rear surround. Let's go left wide. Let's keep adding speakers and just see how, how good they can be. Left top front, let's add so our Atmos speakers, left top rear, right top rear, left top middle, right top middle, and okay, subwoofer, uh, which is tracking almost dead flat from about 100 hertz. Um, so, and then I've actually post-processed that through a, a mini DSP as well. Uh, this room, I, <laughs> I know I'm ranting, I, I get it, but when you look at that, you know, you just know that um, this this is before I've done anything else, put house curves in or anything else. This is just how the processing has has um, basically sorted the speakers out. Okay, and then we can look at before and after, and we can change all of those. But more than that, we can have a look at um, the um, amplitude direct. We can have a look at phase. Um, that's a bit of a mess now because we've got all the speakers there. We've got some phase inversion going on. That's something I want to have a look at, um, and for varying reasons, you know, from uh, you know, often from reflecting off a surface, getting a phase inversion. Um, uh, if I turn some of those speakers off, let's get rid of them as quickly as I can because we don't want to be doing this forever. Let's see. Uh, right. I might have to speed this bit of the video up, perhaps. Right, um, so we can also focus in here, but on the subwoofer, I've got um, uh, one major phase inversion happening at just about the uh, 80 hertz level, um, and uh, then the rest of it's not important to us on the subwoofer. Okay, uh, we can look at group delay, uh, that's the subwoofer. Okay, these are the speakers. I'll just bring left, center, and right back in. Um, we can look at impulse, and we can look at uh, the linear impulse as well. So pretty much anything we want to diagnose in terms of speaker or room behavior is in there, and there's quite a few clues in there on things that I can do to even make this room better, and uh, that's going to be helpful in terms of acoustic treatment, placement of items in the room, and so on and so forth. Um, you could go nuts with that. Okay. Next tab across the top is processor. Now, once again, we're confronted with our meters, so we can see the input and output. The system's still muted, but we can see that we've got all of our 16 channels pumping, right? Everything's, everything's working. And we've got fairly consistent levels across there, so uh, uh, DTSX Pro is working. It's, it's using every single speaker of the room and uh, getting, getting us a great res a result. <coughs> um, Okay, so onto here, it is the master levels. Um, so we can make relative changes to um, levels within the system. I don't generally find I need to touch this page. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, it's all obviously available there. Our inputs. Again, I generally don't tend to mess too much with the inputs because, you know, that's really determined by the source device and I don't have a lot of reason to change that unless, you know, I'm having some kind of problem. But what I will show you is what we have on both the inputs and the outputs. And if you notice this, I can solo one channel, right, which is really cool. So I suddenly just have that one channel listening really great when I'm doing measurements on speakers 
or I can mute that one channel and drop that out and listen to everything else. Great features. They're normally the sort of things that are available on a large, you know, mixing desk, which is something I sort of grew up with. Um, having being able to solo um, uh, channels, um, especially when I'm trying to sort of maybe work with just the left channel and the subwoofer, or I'm trying to do time alignment or uh, check out phase issues and so on and so forth that just send test signals or um, uh, polarity tones and those sorts of things I can go to one channel and I can just go around the room fantastic you know really really helpful but I can also generate pink noise or a sine wave uh, I can do input EQs um, and uh, you know uh, I can also obviously change the out uh, the well input or output levels so I can give them a cut or a boost in dBs or point you know, uh, per, uh, points of a dB um, uh, and the same screen basically appears for your outputs now I've given a little bit of a boost to the Atmos speakers um, and uh, just sort of help them along a little bit there um, and then output delays same kind of thing as you see the control in this unit is just phenomenal all right next tab along is setup all right so we'll go to the top again sources so this is just showing that the speaker setup is Atmos Narrow. I've got one LFE channel and these are my other channels. All right, and I can go through and I can have a look at all of the different setups that are in the system. Active crossovers, we have none. Um, we are running, uh, we're not running um, active speakers, um, but you can certainly do that in here. Um, clock. Remember? Don't touch this one. You know, uh, it's only under special circumstances you need to do that. And this is the configuration editor now. Um, this can be used for troubleshooting, you can um, download it, you can save it, you can reload it, um, but you can send it off to Trinov and they can do some diagnostic work, they can see how you've set up your unit and so on and so forth. Uh, network information and system status. Okay, so <clears throat> we can generate a PDF report of the entire system status, I can turn the system's power off, we can do keyboard layouts and all sorts of things like that. Moving on to presets. Okay, so in here we have uh, 29 presets readily available. Um, the presets I generally tend to use for the rooms, these are ones I've been experimenting with. Preset 1 is my demo room, one seat, maximum subs. I've got a mid sub and a low sub, so depending on who comes in the room, you know, if we've got people who, you know, really aren't into a lot of bass, we can click it straight into preset 3, low subs, it's kind of mild. Um, if people sort of a fairly average taste in subs, we can go to the mid sub, or if we get guys come in and it's like, you know, they're actually only interested in bass, oh, we can go to max sub as well. Uh, and then we've got uh, one that I worked on with uh, Tom, which was the one seat max sub with one kilohertz notch and high, f uh, high pass filter, uh, high frequency cut, sorry, with BBC curve and 100 um, IIR selected. So. Um, you know, and listening to those different presets and, and make, seeing which really is working best in that room. And experimental presets we've thrown at the back. Um, so uh, front row uh, calibration with weighting, right centric, left centric and so on and so forth. So they're ones I don't, you know, I'm just sort of shoved to the back so don't, people don't click on them accidentally. Um, and then the preset information, when it was created, last calibration and so on and so forth. Okay. Um, on the right hand side here I can lock the presets so people don't mess with them uh, you have to unlock it to change it and also the, this button on the right here this blue button is the default presets what it loads with initially so our room starts up on preset demo one okay most of the time across the top of the screen you've got your uh, output signal minus 59 dB at the moment you've got your dim button remember that mute we've got a processing button this tells you that something's going on um, which preset you've selected and then we've got a bypass mode here and then back to the main screen that's that takes us back to here again okay you still with us all right okay um look i want to say something here you know if you are going to buy some high-end gear like this um then you're going to get amazing results but only if you engage someone who really knows what they're doing. There's no point buying this, just throwing it into your rack and expecting to get the most out of it. So, if you're budgeting to buy this, budget some time and money for an expert to come out and look after it, to calibrate the setup. And they want a day or two. All right? Not just, this is not just whack your distances in, set your levels and walk away. 
this will refine itself to your room. It's got all of the equipment, you've got all the advice, you've got all the support of Trinov, you've got the special calibration microphone. Guys, and girls, you know, this this is like buying a, a Formula One. You need your pit crew, you need your tuning guys, you need your engineers, right? You need your comms guys, you need all of those guys to tune the vehicle for the driver and the track so that it performs. This is no different, all right? This is not your, um, I don't know, your basic Toyota, you know, this is uh, that you can just drive off a lot. This thing, this thing needs to be massaged and set up so that you get the best results. So you want to extract the best out of it, so make allowance for that. Don't go chasing the cheapest price on a Trinov because that's what you'll get. you get the best price on a Trinov, it get whacked in your unit, someone will get it going, allocate the speakers and they'll leave you be, and that's it. You're not going to have a room. And you're very likely, and we've had this with a few Trinov owners, where they're going, oh, it's not really sounding that inspiring. And it's not a problem with the Trinov, folks. It's a problem with the way it was set up. Okay. All right. So um, going on from there, let's see. Um, this is the fine-tuning section. Again, we've got our fundamental controls on the left, you can see. So we've got base management here. I can now allocate uh, the filters, uh, the uh, high-pass, low-pass filters. Um, and which speakers I'm going to allocate a sub to and which sub. I've only got one sub at the moment, so I would then allocate all of those speakers to the one sub. But, but, and this is the cool thing, if you've got subs around the room, um, you can actually start to allocate um, that that sub actually responds better to that speaker right beside it. Um, much like people do with stereo, sometimes you have a left and right sub uh, driven by those speakers. Uh, in here, we can actually steer the bass around the room as well um, and associate the sub more with one speaker than another, um, if we so choose. Um, so th the base management in the uh, Altitude 16 is something to behold, right? Very, very capable. Um, likewise, um, we've got LFE and other miscellaneous settings. Um, so uh, this normally is left on 120 hertz because that's where the program information, you know, comes through on. And we've got some optimizer settings as well. Uh, that kicks us back to the screen. Okay. Um, now, there is one other button. I'll just go back to the main screen one more time. And that's this one here. Now, when you first buy a Trinov Altitude 16, start from here. Click on New Configuration. That will then take you to there, where you will configure your speakers. Now, um, so uh, let's create a quick preset and run through this. I don't have the microphone attached. I'm not going to go through a calibration, but save in a new preset. Test. Um, okay. All right. Click next. All right. Now it's going to ask for the speaker configurations. Now we could just make this a stereo system. So we could just have left and right, and we could actually remove all the speakers. So uh, remove speaker. There we go. Uh, remove speaker. There we go and remove speaker um, and that's now a left and right two channel system okay um, let's go next um, we can then allocate uh, any subs that we've got in our system according to this we don't at the moment so we'll just keep going we go next all right this takes us to our base management now there's always a pop-up window that comes up on the right um, and from there uh, we can set our base management options. Uh, we can then connect the microphone. I've got a calibrated microphone in here, so I'm going to select that. Then we clicked, click Connect Next. It says to position the microphone, and it shows you how to do that. And then next, we turn the microphone on. And then next, we set levels. Now, I'm not going to do this, okay? Uh, I'm just going to keep going to Next. Uh, and this is our calibration and normally I'd hit calibrate and then from there on it goes into selecting the weighting and the computation okay so I'm just going to quit that okay there we go um, now the system is back to normal I'm a happy man okay folks so look that's a very quick run through and that's taken sort of over half an hour but it's a very quick run through of the graphic user face of the Trinov Altitude 16. Hope you've enjoyed it. It's interesting to those who people who like to deep dive into these things but if you were ever doubting the capability of these advanced processors 
that should give you some idea of exactly what they're capable of and the amount of work that they need to get them set up properly and also you know for those who fiddle I'm going to say as a friend said to me he who fiddles pays and that can certainly be the case here if you start diving into this and changing things you can get lost very quickly all right but there's, there's a world of people to back you up and support you. So there you go, folks. That's the Trinov Altitude 16. Very, very similar to the Trinov Altitude 32, by the way. Um, so thank you again for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this. And um, yeah, there's, uh, there's more good videos to come. See you later.